got this land, uh, I was very conscious of the fact that trees were disappearing rapidly here. And uh, so I set out to do something about it. And I've been very successful where others have failed. It's simple. I, it, it really is simple. <laughs> to me, it's very simple what we've done. It's partly educational. It was really um, making people realize the obvious. Weather is changing. Rainfall is less predictable. Erosion. And, you know, there's many, many problems that farmers around here live, live with all the time. They don't really have to be told. And it's just to, to understand why. We need to plant more trees and you'll benefit. The price of wood's going up and you'll benefit. You'll have fewer wood. You don't have to go into the forest and risk being arrested by the government. You can do it yourself. And, uh, but I'll, I'll provide you with the seedlings. But, but you have to take indigenous trees from me, seedlings, and some exotics that are fast growing. You can't have one or the other. You have to have both. Initially what I did, I, I asked for a village meeting and uh, a public meeting, basically with village leaders, elders, village government, and anyone else who would come. Uh, it, there was no bribes involved, no sodas, no beer, no nothing. Just Mase having a, a word. <laughs> What's Mase mean? Me, old man. I, I wasn't so old then when I started this. I just said, guys, what's going on here? It's why is it? Why are we having less rain? Why is it getting hotter up here? Uh, wh why? Trying to get them to be the ones that were thinking about it mm. and encourage people to plant on their boundaries and plant where they could. It was a, a bit rocky starting, but um, it caught on. So I think I was telling you we're over half a million seedlings in less just under 10 years. The biggest problem of all is bushmeat trade, by far the biggest problem, and um, it, it's it, it's uh, reached sort of epidemic proportions in some areas. Poaching has been done from motorbikes now. You can't carry a wildebeest on a bike. On several bikes, you can chop up a wildebeest that you killed no. by running it down or shooting it. So it's a major, major problem, and unfortunately, it's not receiving the kind of attention it deserves, but because. The ivory and elephant poaching got most of the attention in the last few years, mm -hmm. for good reason. But we have a far more uh, serious problem with um, this bushmeat trade. Habitat loss is killing more and decimating our wildlife much faster than poaching, in my view. That's the biggest challenge of all, is that is somehow to maintain areas outside the park with pastoralism rather than agriculture, which gives a quick and good return so long as there's rain. It might become necessary in the next 20 years or so for a fence to go around Terengiri Park, but you would have immediate problems with genetics of the, the uh, remaining population. The numbers of animals would be greatly reduced because there will only be as many as can actually survive year-round in that uh, small area, whereas they need 24,000 square kilometers now. Mm -hmm. So if they're reduced down to 2,800, there's going to be a lot less wildlife. We're running out of time, and like, like seriously running out of time. Um, we, we have to try and protect dispersal areas where wildebeest have their calves and zebra. Um, we have to protect dispersal areas where elephants go. We have to protect migration corridors. It, it, it's very much in the hands of the Tanzanians themselves to see the value of wildlife, and that it's a, you know it's a sustainable resource. Unlike you know, this now part of Salu Game Reserve has been excised for uranium mining. So you know that's bad. It's really really bad. It's a bad precedent. It means that our our protected areas are not safe because the government would be tempted to do this again and again and again. Mm. And they shouldn't. There should be some, cons constitutionally, my belief is that there should be protection for, for protected areas.